Bonjour everyone, my name is Noah and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a sit down video in a really long time, so please bear with me. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you probably know that there has been a few important changes in my life lately and I haven't really talked about them in detail anywhere, so I thought I would do a little updated q and I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me a couple of questions and I'm gonna go through them right now. Why are you so nervous? First, what's your favorite dish to cook? I recently started cooking again. I had a long period where I was literally ordering in or eating out almost every meal of the week. I think my favorite dish to cook right now would just be like a grilled chicken with a cumin coconut milk sauce. And I would eat that with like couscous and maybe some vegetable. Cause I have to say that. <laughs> what's your big three? I am a Capricorn sun but a leo moon and a aquarius rising i don't know much about the aquarius rising and most about the leo moon because that's what i was most interested in <laughs> since i was a kid how old were you when you came out i had different phases i came out to my best friends when i was 18 or 19 because they clocked me and my boyfriend so i kind of had to and then the following summer i think when i was 19 or 20 I came out to my parents and then i came out fully to everyone in my life and on social media when i was 20. why did you and sal break up okay that was probably the question that was asked most often and the reason most of you are here watching right now i want to start by saying there really wasn't a big argument i also don't think it's either of us's fault we started dating a little over four years ago um, when we were both still in college, the summer before our senior year. So throughout the next three to four years within our relationship, we started figuring out what we liked, the kind of friends we wanted to have around us, the kind of career and life we wanted. And we basically never got to be adults separate from each other because from graduating college to getting our first jobs together, to traveling around the world and doing all these things, we did everything together. And it doesn't always leave room for individual growth. Now, because of Sal's career in the Air Force, he was away a lot of the time throughout these three years. And I think from these times, we kind of started to understand that not everything that we liked or that we wanted for the future necessarily aligned. All of this to say that we loved each other and we had the best four years together. We just ended up growing apart and realizing together that staying together wasn't the best for either of us and that we would probably be happier if we separated. Now we're still on very good terms and good friends. We talk almost every day. There's no argument and yeah, it's just, it's just life. All right, I didn't cry. Good job, Noah. How old are you and where do you live? I am 24 years old and I live in Los Angeles, California. Do you think this generation is not meant to have love forever? I wanted to put this question in because of course, over the course of the past few months, since the breakup, I have been thinking about. It's difficult going from a place where you get engaged and think you're gonna marry that person and live the rest of your life together to being completely separated from them and trying to move on on your own. Of course, the thought of like love forever doesn't exist comes. I still don't know if I'm ready or able to talk about it in like a meaningful and clear way because my judgment is obviously still clouded by my emotions. But I also wanna say that I don't think it's a generation thing. If anything, our generation is more open to the idea that it not being for forever is okay. I don't even know if my grammar makes sense right now. I'm just trying to say that our generation doesn't feel like you have to be locked up in a marriage forever and feels empowered to leave a situation that doesn't make them happy anymore. Does love forever exist? Maybe, I'm sure. I mean, some of these social media couples be looking like it. Oh wait, that was me at one point. <laughs> How do you get your tan? Um, by going in the sun, really bad. I go in the sun a lot. I love being in the sun. I'm also of North African descent, so I tan really easily, like 30 minutes in the sun and I'm like really dark. What are the three things that could make you feel fulfilled in life? I think what would make me feel fulfilled is a fulfilling career. So feeling like I'm successful and I have a purpose in the work that I do. Healthy and happy relationships with the people around me, whether that's like family or friends or a love interest. <laughs> and a third thing, I think being in an environment that I love and that I find beautiful and calming and refreshing, like whether that's my home or even the city that I'm in, if I live in a city that's sunny and that 
doesn't make me feel sad every time I wake up and see the gloomy sky. I skipped a conservative state to live my fullest life, but can't find my gay community advice. First of all, congrats. I know it's not always the easiest move. My advice on finding your gay community, I think when I first moved to New York and I didn't know anyone there, my first move was to get on Tinder and it can feel kind of stupid and counterproductive, but I went on Tinder and literally just swiped with people whose interests seemed similar to mine and who I feel like I would vibe with. That's how I met my best friend in New York who introduced me to all his friends and I literally just made my social circle through that. I also loved the gay people that worked at my company when I was working corporate in New York, so that can be an outlet. I don't know what else. You're not gonna wanna go out by yourself. I don't think I would. We know about Sa, how about Char? Okay, so, um, oh no, not now. So just to give you the little rundown on Char, if you're not, well, you probably know him. Char is a little puppy that we decided to foster mid-January of this year. So we're supposed to have him for a couple of weeks. A month went by, two months went by. By that time, we're super attached to him. Like, we were sleeping with him playing with him, I was taking him to the beach, going on walks, we just fall in love. He was also super attached to us, like we were the only parents that he knew. We started talking to the shelter and telling them that the situation was just beginning to be complicated because we didn't know if we would be able to give Char up if they were to find an adoptive family for him. But at the same time, I didn't think I was ready to adopt. It's just a lot of responsibility. But Sa was really the one who fell in love and took care of him. Like he was taking him to the vet, making sure he was eating the right things. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, when Sal and I decided to separate, he made the decision to adopt Char and keep him, which makes me really happy because, I mean, I'd rather, <sighs> I would 100% rather Char be with Sal than be with someone- God damn! <laughs> I would 100% rather Char be with Sal than be with a random family that I don't know of. It also makes me think that I can see Char in the future. And I also get updates from Sal really often, like pictures and videos and like notes on how he's doing. But it's definitely difficult. I don't think I realized how much I loved him until they moved out. Sal moved out of state. So he's not in California anymore, so I can't see them too often. That's where Char is. He's with Sal. Oh. <laughs> Which is good. I'm happy. And he's taking such good care of him. Like, it's like his baby. Couldn't have worked out better for him. Am I crying? Who's crying? You're crying? Top three shows you've watched recently. I am not a TV person, but one that I've watched recently that I absolutely loved was The First Lady with Viola Davis. It follows the term of Michelle Obama and also Eleanor Roosevelt and Betty Ford. Finding out their husband is gonna be president of the United States all the way until the end and like kind of the aftermath of being the first lady and the role and responsibility that come with it and what they did with it personally. And it was super interesting. The production value is like incredible. The actresses are all amazing. It was just a really good show and it felt interesting beyond the entertainment value of it. How's your mental health been dealing with all these changes? I did just cry a little, but I definitely have ups and downs where I feel sad and then rationalize it and realize that this is the best situation for everyone involved. Overall, I think I'm doing really good. Are you self-conscious of your body in any way i hesitated whether i should answer that question a lot i definitely see the hypocrisy in someone who is conventionally attractive or who gets a lot of praise on social media talking about them being self-conscious about their physique but i also think it's normal for everyone to experience some level of like doubt when it comes to their physical appearance. There are definitely a few things that I've struggled with. The main one probably being my body hair. I've talked about it a lot on my Instagram just because it's something that I've like struggled with and then found power in and I'm still kind of working through and learning to love. I always thought that the hairless, smooth male body was most attractive and most beautiful because I was seeing it in movies, TV shows, on ads, etc. And I was always very hairy, especially being North African. Kids in middle school were also not the nicest, so I started shaving my chest until I started seeing more people that I found attractive, being more comfortable with their body hair, so I started being more comfortable in my body hair. Recently, the one that started causing a little bit more trouble is the hair I have on my back and shoulders. I don't know if you can tell, but I have gotten really hairy on my shoulders and on my back in the past. I'd say a few months. Like, I thought I was past puberty. Aren't you supposed to stop 
growing hair in different places. So my first thought was like, I'm gonna shave it off, back hair is so ugly, it's gross, I can't do it, etc. But then I was like, no, like you're going through the exact same pattern that you were going through with your chest hair. Just deal with it, let it grow, you'll learn to love it. I'm still personally struggling with it because I don't find it attractive, but I'm just faking it till I make it and hopefully soon I will find it beautiful. For now it's just there. <laughs> Would you get more piercings? I recently just got two more piercings. This one right here and this one right here. I also didn't think I would get these two. It was at an event and I was a little tipsy and my friends were like, get it. So I did it. But if I were to get a new one, I really have been wanting one that's like in the middle of the ear, like right here on the flat part. So I would probably do that. Favorite fragrance. My favorite fragrance would be Elevator Music, and it's a collab between Byretto and Off-White. It came out in 2018 and I got it that year and I've been using it so sparingly. Is that a word? Because I love it so much and they discontinued it where it was like a limited edition. So if you have perfume recommendations for men, please let me know. Are you going back to New York City or staying in LA? It was also something that I thought about because I still love New York and I have so much fun there and I have a lot of friends that are still living there. But the rent is looking a little crazy. Like I was trying to find a place under 2K in Manhattan and it's like impossible. There was like one result on Zillow. I also don't think I'm done with LA. I also love the weather so much. I don't think I'm ready for New York winters. So for now LA. Speak Spanish. Solamente puedo hablar un poquito de español. I really I dated someone whose whole family is Mexican for four years and didn't perfect my Spanish. It's stupid though. <laughs> Finally, last one. What's your go-to drink at the club? At the club, it has been a uh, Casamigos Red Bull, but I feel like it's kind of like a crackhead drink because it's like tequila and Red Bull. So I'm trying to reduce that. I think tequila pineapple. Yeah, like Casamigos pineapple would be my good drink. All right, and that is it for our q and I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question. If you have more, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below and I'll try to get to them. Thank you so much for being with me and for supporting me after all these years and all these changes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Instagram, TikTok. All my links will be in the description box down below. I'm posting on TikTok a lot lately. You guys should come, it's fun. And I will see you guys very soon for a new video. Bye.